Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Gabby, and I'm with the Statewide Internet Portal Authority. SIPA and DocuSign work very closely together, and in fact, SIPA utilizes uh, this service daily. Uh, we certainly love it. So for today's webinar, you're going to learn about the benefits of digital transaction management. We have a couple people from DocuSign with us. We have Jim Harper, who's going to give you kind of an overview, and then Brian Montgomery will do uh, a demo for you guys. Uh, and you guys can go ahead and take it away. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks for joining. My name is Jim Harper. I run the state and local team uh, here at DocuSign. And uh, Brian Montgomery is a solution engineer on our team. Uh, and together we are going to go through a, a brief introduction of DocuSign, uh, what we're doing with state and local government across the country. And then uh, Brian's going to show you the product and give you a, a web demo so you can get a feel of what it's like to operate inside of DocuSign. And the good news is, is that most people have had an experience with DocuSign at some point. Uh, they've either leased a house or an apartment or bought a house or a condo and uh, completed a transaction using DocuSign. And today, uh, I'm going to focus on the government space and how we can take that, uh, you know, that experience that you guys have probably had and translate that into improving uh, constituent services. So. I'm going to go through about a 10-minute intro, and then I'll hand it over to Brian. So DocuSign is the fastest, most secure way to make every decision and approval digital so you can keep life and business moving forward. We take for granted sometimes that uh, the, the most interactions that we have uh, with citizens and businesses and government are tied to paper interactions, and we're here to help improve that, help we gain efficiencies and improve the citizen and business experience interacting with government. So. DocuSign makes any workflow approval simple and fast. It allows you to sign anytime, anywhere, on any device so that you can reach your constituents where they are and not have them have to come into an uh, uh, office and stare at a wall of multicolored forms and try to figure out which document they need to complete to interact with their, gov with their government. We help to ensure that your transactions are secure and compliant and legally enforceable and we help you get your approvals and documents done faster than ever. So when we think about DocuSign, most people think of DocuSign as a, you know, the, the signature component, um, but there's much more to it than that. We help, the, the product helps you prepare documents. Uh, it helps you to interact with data, collect data, integrate into back office systems. We manage and, and run workflows that could be as simple or complex as you would like to make sure that your document is routed correctly and that all of your documents are executed in good order so that you don't have to redo and reissue uh, documents because somebody signed out of order or they left something blank. Um, at the execution layer, we handle the authentication so that you can prove uh, somebody is who they say they are. So we have multiple levels of authentication depending on the risk profile of the content of your documents. Uh, again, we do the signature. We allow you to do the scribble signature on your, your mobile device, or you can adopt a, a, a template that you can use. Uh, we also do templates. So you know, templates are taking a document, building a template in a workflow and a routing uh, rule one time and deploying it multiple times. And that's really important and valuable to gain efficiency when you're talking about high volume transactions like licensing and permitting and business registration. You don't want to have to create those templates every time. Um, and then when you're managing that process, we help with the reporting. We give you reports and dashboards to let you know how many documents have been executed, how many are outstanding, what the average number of days it is, and it gives you transparency and insight into the process. We help you with your records retention policy. We can store the document for you, or we can dump it into a content management system of your choice, depending on what, what your um, what your enterprise software strategy is there. So uh, SharePoint is a great partner of ours, Documentum and, and such, or again, we can do it ourselves. And then we give you the audit trail so that you have the complete chain of custody of that document, that agreement, who had it when, what they did with it, and uh, you got that, that audit trail for enforceability. And then the product sits on top of a very robust platform. The platform is important because it allows you to deploy this as an enterprise-grade system and we take care of security so that you can 
feel confident that if you're doing things with medical records or health and human services or HIPAA compliant, uh, or we, uh, we maintain PCI compliance if you're dealing with credit card information, lots and lots of security and accreditation that we take care of for, for our customers so they don't have to worry about that. We have high availability, availability which is important. Uh, we do some very uh, important document um, routing. One example of it would be uh, electronic warrants. Right? You can't have scheduled downtime when you need to process a search warrant. So we have uh, no scheduled downtime, and we operate with uh, four and a half or five nines. So it's a very, very um, uh, reliable system, uh, carrier-grade architecture. Uh, we have a global architecture that's not as important in government. Most of our government customers want their data to stay on U.S. soil, and we take care of that for you. And U.S. soil never leaves. U.S. data never leaves U.S. soil and then open integration framework. And this is important because we can connect into any back office system of record, whether it's a Microsoft system, whether it's a Salesforce system, whether it's an SAP or Oracle system, uh, or a custom system. If it's integratable, we can integrate to it and pull data from that system and integrate into and leave your documents into your content management system. So next is uh, some of the areas where DocuSign delivers value, right? There's, and we talk in the concept of use cases. So one customer could have multiple use cases. They could use DocuSign for HR agreements. They could use DocuSign for procurement agreements. They could use DocuSign for unemployment insurance enrollment. Um, there's really no business process that's off limits. We're, again, we're competing with paper and improving efficiencies. And so I've got a couple areas where we um, see clustering around use cases. Notifications. Uh, you know, travel and expense policies, one-way notifications. You just need to be able to know that somebody um, was sent uh, something that you want to be able to prove down the road. Uh, acknowledgement. Somebody needs to, or business or entity needs to acknowledge that they received it. Um, approvals. We talk about purchase order approvals. We talk about travel request approvals. Um, you know, and handling the workflow and routing of those uh, approval documents. And then collecting data. Um, you know, if you want to hire a new hire, you might need to create, you know, complete a background check, being able to use the document, the, the, the new hire onboarding document, um, having that digital and, and allowing that data to be integrated into a back office HR system um, to streamline the process for you to avoid rekeying and, and uh, data entry errors. And then ultimately signing legal agreements, right? So master vendor agreements, contracts, work orders, non disclosure agreements. Those are all some of the areas that we're clustering around uh, solution sets and, and use cases. And then this slide uh, represents uh, our presence in public sector. The blue states are states where we have DocuSign deployed at some level of government. And then the red push pins represent the local municipalities where we have DocuSign deployed in sub -level, some level of government. And the beauty of DocuSign, right, it, it can apply to so many different things. So it could be deployed in the Department of Transportation and in Michigan, it could be deployed at the Department of Health in South Carolina. Um, at the end of the day, I'm providing uh, a platform and, and a document transaction, digital transaction management platform to our customers, and they can use it however they need for whatever use case they need. And the reason the government is choosing DocuSign is, you know, is because of choice, right? We have 300 pre-built integrations that will let you integrate into, you know, back office systems, productivity tools like Office 365. Salesforce, SAP solutions, like we said, and we have a very robust API uh, library, so that any you know any system, any system that you need to connect to, we're able to. And then we have multi-language support, 43 different languages. So we give you the choice to deploy how you want to, and what integrate into what system you need to. Um, public sector chooses DocuSign because of experience. Uh, we are the market leader in digital transaction management. 70% of all electronic signatures that happen, happen on DocuSign. And uh, that number continues to grow. And then most important, trust. We've got 85 million users. We have 225,000 customers. And, and this includes federal, state, and local customers. And they need to know that the system is going to work. They're going to know that their data is secure and the system is available. And so we are very, very uh, transparent in our security standards. We're also very transparent in the system performance. We've got a trust site where you can see the performance of the system. And uh, we continue to invest hundreds of millions of dollars into our infrastructure to make sure that the system operates at enterprise grade. And 
this this chart really just represents you know use cases that we see our customers deploying DocuSign. Again, there's no business process that's off limits anywhere. There's paper in government. We can help improve the efficiencies and help drive uh, return on investment to the, to the state and cities and counties. Um, so the return on investment can be measured in several ways. We, we look at hard dollar savings. You know, every time that we replace a piece of paper, a uh, paper-based transaction, we can conservatively save customers between $20 and $25 per transaction. When those transactions are measured in the hundreds and thousands, in some cases millions, uh, the, the return on investment becomes very, very, uh, very, very positive and very, very rewarding. Um, and then the other area is soft dollar savings that we call it productivity gains and process improvements. Uh, we usually knock 60 to 70 percent off of the processing time of a of a transaction. So if you're thinking about, you know, putting benefits enrollment online or unemployment applications online and digitizing that, you know, being able to take a process that might take two or three months and turning it into a couple weeks has a massive impact on um, the citizen and the business that are trying to operate with the government. A couple examples of return on investments that we uh, have documented and our customers have documented across all different um, levels of government and all different types of use cases. And uh, our customers love sharing uh, that story. So uh, if you'd like to talk to some of our customers, we'd be happy to connect you with them. And that's my introduction. I'm done. So uh, now I want Brian, uh, to, Brian Montgomery to, hand, to walk you through a product demonstration of DocuSign and what it's like to operate inside of DocuSign. Brian? Yeah, so I'm uh, so thanks Jim. <clears throat> I'm trying to share out my screen. Uh, I guess I think everyone's muted. Jim or Gabby, are you able to see my desktop? Should be I a, yep, I see it. Web, website portal looks like New York State. Okay, and I obviously that means you can hear me as well. So great. So thanks everyone. Um, so I'm Brian Montgomery, solution engineer with DocuSign. <clears throat> so more of a technical expert. So what I'm going to do in the next 20 minutes or so is take you through a demonstration, actually two demonstrations of DocuSign, and try to give you a sense of, of how we work and some of the benefits of using DocuSign. So the first scenario I want to take you through is an example of an embedded signing with DocuSign. So it's very common that we are part of a larger business process. You've got services that constituents can request through your website, or you've got caseworkers who are already performing uh, you know, actions and their work in another system like a case management system or Salesforce or, um, you know, a content repository somewhere else. You want to use DocuSign for the, the routing and the signature of the document, but it, it's participating in a larger process. And so that's, the, that's kind of the premise behind this embedded example. And that's typically about 70% of the transactions we process um, are through the API. So as I said, it's the most common example of the way um, or of the, of the most common example of the way that folks will deploy DocuSign. So to show you an example of that, you're looking at a mocked up website. It should in fact say New York State. Um, so this is kind of a canned demo environment that we use. And within this environment, we've embedded several, several different signing examples. Um, so basically services that a constituent might request through a website. And so if I go into the state agency tab, and I look at this vehicle owner transfer under DMV, this is just an example of a transaction they might have submit. So everything you've seen so far just represents it would be your website. Uh, it's not actually DocuSign yet. But once we click on that link to initiate that transaction, you can see we've built out you know, sort of the, the data elements we're going to capture within that form. So what's the vehicle information, the type, the year, the make, et cetera. I'm going to cheat a little bit and pre-fill a lot of this information. So you can see that's populated. Let me just change the name here. So you're going to tell it's actually a real example. I'll enter an email address as well. But so this is it's your website. And you might be doing something similar today. So it's, it's your website. It's your process. You're leveraging infrastructure you've already built or is already in place. And so you have complete control over the user experience by embedding in this way. Where DocuSign comes into play is once we get to the end of the transaction or actually want to submit the transaction, let me just change the state here as well. So when I hit Submit, that's when we're now invoking the DocuSign API. We're taking all that information we collect in that website, and then we're populating the form that the, the sort of the requester or the constituent is actually going to sign in this example. And so the first step in the process within DocuSign is we need the 
the requester to opt into the use of electronic signatures. And so that's why you see this checkbox here. Um, the, the contrast, this is a pre-built color scheme, so hopefully everyone can see it um, okay. Um, but so you, you can see we've got a, a disclosure at the top here. I agree to the use of electronic records and signatures. Once you select that, we hit continue, and then we're actually presented with the form. Uh, I'm going to opt in for the use of geolocation, and you'll see how that plays in a little bit later on. But once I've opted in for the use, now I'm actually presented with the form. Um, so in this case, it's a PDF form. We're rendering it through the browser. We've got a couple tags that will let me navigate through, so I can hit start, and it'll jump me to the next item that I need to fill out. But you can see we also have the underlying form, as well as a series of data tags that we've overlaid on that form that allows us to populate that information. And so all the information that we collected in the web page, the fact that we're doing a motor vehicle transaction, you can see the make and the model and the other details, that's all pre-populated based on what we provided as part of that web form. Now I can also come in here and change the information or provide additional information. But again, sort of the point of this is you already have a process built into your web page. You're probably collecting all this information. We just want to automate the actual signing and the population of the form itself. Um, I would also point out if you have sensitive information, there are ways we can apply masks to sort of cover or, or um, hide sensitive information, for example, social security number. Uh, and we also use sort of a standard web paradigm of the red fields or indicate required fields. Non-required fields will show up in gray. And you'll see a little bit better example of that in a minute. But so I've we've captured all the information on the web page. We've populated it all into the form. From here, I could go through the form and verify each you know, component, each data tag that um, I'm populating or providing. Or we can also we have a kind of an auto navigation option here. And I can just jump ahead to the next part of the form that I'm going to provide. And that's actually the signature itself. So everything else we collected as part of that upfront process to sign, I'm just going to click into this field. If you notice, we also have the name pre-populated as well as the signature date. So in addition to our ability to capture information in that web page or in that other application and populate the form, we also have sort of system fields. And so these are automatically populated based on who the recipient is, who the signer is, as well as the date we're actually signing. Once I'm ready to sign, I just click into the field. We create a representation of the signature. Because I'm on a web browser, it's going to give me a, a default style. I can click in here and change if there are different fonts or I want to create a different, different representation of my signature, I could do that. If I was on a mobile device, on a touch enabled device like an iPad, you could actually, we would default to draw and the person could actually you know, draw in with their finger the, the representation of the signature. Right? So there's some flexibility and we do some responsive design based on how the user or the person is actually signing. But once I'm ready to sign, I just hit Adopt and Sign. That basically confirms my signature. You can see it populates it into the form, and that's it. So once I've done that, I hit Finish, and that form is now complete. It will go to the next step in the workflow that's been defined within DocuSign. So it's very quick and easy to sign in this way. Again, we're eliminating paper. You don't have to print anything out, scan it back, fax it back, you know, do any of that. It's all electronic. It's all right in front of the user. Uh, and so it's very quick and easy as a result. Now this demo is meant to show our ability to embed and the use of some of our APIs. So in here we also show, built in some additional capabilities using the API. And APIs underline, or underlie all of our capabilities, so everything you can do in the various signing ways you can also do through the API. So for example, once I've, selected, or once I've submitted a transaction, uh, I submitted this form to the DMV, maybe I want to be able to check the status. And so we've got a view status option here. This invokes the API method. I'll just give that a minute to refresh. Never fails. Things always run a little bit slower, it seems like, on a, a web meeting. Uh, as you can see, so in this example, we've populated the ID automatically based on the transaction I just submitted. And then we could potentially pull back information about that transaction. So who is it for? What's the current status? The fact that it was completed. Um, I'm on East Coast time, so you can see this actually is the right time zone. It's just about three hours behind because it's three hours. Uh, data center is located on the West Coast, or that's the setting within that org. Right? But that's the current transaction. And so any of these details you can potentially pull back through the API. So in addition to being able to submit a transaction, maybe being able to check the status of that transaction, maybe I'd also want to be able to see the signed document. Again, it's just an API method, so I can simply select that link, and that would actually pull up the signed completed document. Let me scroll so you can actually see the full window. And you can see in this case, 
Again, all the information has been transferred into the form. You can see it's, it's the motor vehicle, all the information we provided, the fact that we had the Colorado as a state. It was submitted by Joe Reed. I mean, all those details, but it is a, it's a signed, completed form, right? So, again, very quick and easy to do kind of self-service scenarios like this uh, and embed into your existing applications and websites. So let me now shift to a second example. And the second example, as opposed to an embedded signing, is going to be an example where I'm going in through the web console, I'm going to generate a transaction, and then we're going to sign that transaction as several different recipients. So there's really only two differences for this. I'm going to use the same form. It's the same basic information I'm going to provide. The two differences are where I'm initiating a signing from. So as I said, this is going to be an example of us going in through the web console or SaaS application. So I can just go to a web browser, log in, and have access to the DocuSign functionality. And then to illustrate some of the capabilities, I've got a slightly longer workflow. I say slightly because it's about two or three recipients. Uh, it's not that much longer, but again, it, it illustrates how we can build workflow into some of these documents through DocuSign. So let me toggle over. So this is the web console in DocuSign. You can see I've already logged in, and this is my home page. Um, in the bottom left here, we have a notification section. You'll see why that's important as we get more towards the end of the process. But what I want to do is I want to generate a transaction or a document for signature. So this represents a case where maybe I work for an agency in Colorado. Uh, I'm initiating transactions of I've got forms I need constituents to sign. Right? And so I'm going to initiate the process as opposed to them going to the website and starting it themselves. To do that, I'm going to hit this new button you see in the top center of the screen. And I want to use a template because that's going to have the, the document and the business process already built into it. So it's just a quicker and easier way for me to generate these transactions or documents for signature. I'll do a quick search so I can pull up the right one. You can see I've got my transfer or gift of vehicle. This is actually it's the same template, or it's the same form rather that we just saw a minute ago. And this is pulling up the information behind the template itself. So as I said, you can see in this case the workflow is slightly different. We're going to have about three distinct recipients or signers who are playing. We say signers because people tend to think of electronic signature, but a signer or a recipient can have other rules beyond just signing. They also might receive a copy or provide some information beyond a signature. Um, but you can see in this case we've got three recipients. I've got my vehicle purchaser. And so I know that I need him to sign, so I'm going to provide his contact information. I've got the seller. I also need them to sign. So I'm going to provide their information. And that's it. The third person, that's going to default automatically to me because of how the template was set up. Right? And so when that's the case, that information is already there. I should provide the first two. And then from there I can hit send, and that is the entire process of generating that transaction and that document for signature. So again, really quick and easy to generate these transactions. So let me flip roles. We, I just said that our first recipient or our first signer is going to be someone who is purchasing a vehicle and they're submitting this form. And the, the process in the form obviously is not important. I just want to illustrate some of the capabilities. All right, but so we've got our first signer is Joe Reed. So let me switch roles and I'm going to log into my email as Joe. And what we should see right there is because Joe was selected as a recipient on that transaction within that form, he's got an email notification of please DocuSign transfer or gift of vehicle. I click into the email. He's got a nice branded email. I pulled the, the DOR uh, logo and used that to brand the email. You could also change the color scheme within the main part here uh, or any of these amplifying information. Right, the goal here is we want to make it very easy for the recipient, the signer in this case, Joe, to know what he's being signed and why. Right? And so once he reviews the information, I'll click in, I hit Review Document, and that's going to pull up that document and allow me to sign. So important point to point out here is the signers do not need to be users of DocuSign. Only the person who initiates the transaction needs to be. But just like we saw before, because we're asking Joe to sign, I'm going to opt in for the use of electronic signatures. So I'll hit Continue. That then is going to present the form to me. And this probably hopefully looks very familiar to what you just saw a few minutes ago because it is the same form. And again, I've overlaid a number of tags. In this case, I've left a lot of them optional because I don't think you want to see me typing a lot of information as part of the demo. Right? But as you see, these are all fillable. Right? And so I could provide the information. Um, and again, another example of auto population, because Joe is our recipient and the person asking the sign, we can automatically populate his name into the right sections of the form. 
we also have, this is an example of that mask field that I showed you earlier. In addition to masking, we can also provide you know, guidance to the, the person who's signing as they input the value to say, okay, if it's a social security number, there's a certain format we expect to be in that field. And so we give them that guidance, let them know what the format is, and in this case, we're also masking the value. So ensuring that good, accurate input, again, is part of the benefit and part of the reason why this is so much faster uh, than using paper forms. Another example of that, if I have a date field, again, I can start to put that in. And you, you can see as I start to type in that information, it's going to give me guidance about what is the format of that field. Provide the information, and then I'm going to go on in the rest of the form. So I could obviously, in this case, I would provide more information again to, to keep the focus on kind of the functionality and not me typing. I kept this very simple. And Jim, are you are you still able to see my screen? Um, I'm not. No. No. Okay. So let me, I just got a notification about the network. Toggling. So um, let me pause for a minute. You know, let me know if that, if that refreshes and comes back through. Gabby, how about you? Are you able to see it? Uh, I do see a screen. I believe I can see your mouse moving if you kind of scroll around. Okay. All right. So let me try. Keep, let me keep going. And if you don't. If, if what you're seeing doesn't match what I'm describing, please let me know, and uh, I will figure out the best way to proceed. Um, okay, so I've gotten this form. I'm, I've gone in as the first recipient. I've populated the information I need. I'm now to the point where I'm ready to sign. Again, I can hit next, and it'll jump me to the required tag. Again, just like we saw before, I'm just going to populate a signature. So I click into that, that tag within the form. I hit adopt and sign. We auto-populate the date of signing. Now I hit finish, and that's it. So that was, I don't know, five or six minutes because I was taking a while to explain and tell you what I was doing. But again, hopefully what you're getting a sense from there is it's very quick and easy to sign with DocuSign and the way we present the, the form and the information to the user. So this is a multi-step workflow. First recipient, Joe, is signed. We now route to the second recipient. And so the second recipient was Jack Mills. So let me flip back over to a different email address. And you can get various notifications. And we can see, so now Jack has also gotten a notification of please DocuSign transfer or gift of vehicle. Same branded email, same information. Again, I'll click into the document. Opt in for the use of electronic signatures as well as the tracking the location. And you can see, because we're now the second recipient, we can see all the information that Joe has populated into the form. So the fact the motor vehicle, the fact I did the year, as well as the fact that he signed in his section and it's been dated. So all I want to do here is I'm going to sign as well. So just click into the signature field. Again, auto populate the other information. I hit finish. And that's it. So again, really quick and easy once you've done this a few times and you know how it works and what you're being asked to sign. Third step in the workflow in this case is I've got my originator. Let's call that the agency employee, whoever started this transaction, who's going to receive the, the finalized version as well as actually initialize and enter a few additional values into that form. So they would also get an email notification right, to let them know that they need to sign. But I'm going to show you a little bit differently how they could also see that notification or know that they have something to sign. So if I go back into the admin console or the web application for DocuSign, I mentioned that we have this section here and this is sort of a dashboard that lets me know what items require me to sign or I'm waiting on others or just have been completed overall. And I never actually refreshed that after I sent that item out for signature. So if you notice, there was a two before action required. Now it's three. That's because of that transaction that I've been showing you for the past you know, five or ten minutes. And in fact, if I click into that dashboard, we can see right at the top of the list is my police doctor sign, transfer, or get the vehicle, who it's gone to, and the fact that I need to sign. So you know, we have immediate awareness about what transactions have been are sort of in progress, where are they in the process, who still needs to sign them, and who waited on in order to complete those items. 
If I want additional information about that, I can simply click into that particular document or envelope. And so I can see Joe signed. In fact, he signed today. Jack signed. He also signed today. Obviously, we know that because you just saw me sign a few minutes ago. Right? And then we can see that I'm the, the final person who needs to sign in order to complete the form. I can also click in and view the form. So if I want to see how complete it is, it, is it, where is it in the process, again, I have access to all that information uh, from within here. So once everything looks good, I want to go ahead and sign. So to do that, I'm going to simply hit the Sign button that you see on the top left. Very much similar experience. So this is probably starting to look familiar. Again, we opt in. I'll jump to My Part, Auto-Populate the Date. In this case, I'm going to do initials as opposed to a signature, but it's very similar functionality. I just click in and we populate the initials. And then I also need to enter a, a fair market value. For this case, for the vehicle, uh, again, it could be any tag, and it's going to be based on how you set up the form and how you want to manage these. So once that's done, I hit Finish, and that's it. So that form is now complete. So you know, it's kind of a transaction that's based on an existing template. We had a three-step workflow, and it was probably 10 minutes uh, you know, from start to completion for all of the signers. I'm showing you this through the web console. I um, also wanted to mention that we provide a mobile app that you can use to sign as well. Uh, we, we, have, or we have mobile apps for iOS, Android, as well as Windows Mobile. Uh, and they work sort of similar to what you just saw in the last example, where you log in, you have a dashboard, so let me know or let you know which items you have that need to be signed or the status of those, and then you can go in and complete and sign those items um, that have been routed to you. A couple of the things to point out here before I wrap up is, so I mentioned we have this, this you know, record of the transaction, the please I sign transfer gift to vehicle, and we can see the status of that at any time. We can also do the same thing once it's completed. Uh, but we also get a couple of additional options when it's completed as well. So obviously we can click in, we can see all the details, we can see the fact that everyone side signed because it is in fact completed. But we can also now see the history of that document or that envelope. And so all the details including when was it created, when was it actually sent out, what's the current status, as well as all the recipients, and then all of the individual actions that have been taken on that document. And when you look at these individual actions, you can see we're tracking a lot of details. Right, so this is all kind of the audit information around the signatures in that form that are located within that packet. And the information like the date and time it was signed, viewed, clicked into, et cetera, um, the IP address, and the, the person who was doing that. If the, if the user has opted in for the use of geolocation, you can actually see where they signed from. Um, and so if I zoom out a little bit, that's actually my home address where I'm posting this from. And I'm just going to hesitate for a minute because it looks like the network kind of toggled for a minute there. Gabby, yeah, are you still seeing my screen? Yep. Okay. So if I start to zoom out, you'll see I'm located in the greater DC area. All right, but so we've got information about who's signing and where uh, and all of those details. We also have, we go, can go a step further and create a certificate of completion. This is really the true non-repudiation non details around that document and the signatures on that document. So all the information about how many pages are within the document, how many signatures, the fact that we've got a set of initials in this case, all the details about who was signed and when. You can see all the information we're tracking, how were those users authenticated, basically everything that proves this is a good, valid transaction. And I point this out because this really kind of goes to the heart of, of you know, the value we provide. It, you, if it's not a provable transaction, right, it's not a useful capability. Uh, and the fact that we provide all this information is what allows you to prove that these are good, valid signatures within these transactions. We've been doing this for 13 years, hundreds of millions of transactions. There's only one attempted challenge of a signature that's made it to court. Everything else fell out short of that because it didn't support, all the support information didn't support the person who was challenging the signature. Uh, the one case that didn't make it to court was thrown out because we had all that information about who signed, when, from what IP address, all those other details. Right? So again, you're, these are good, provable, valid transactions that you're creating from within DocuSign. Um, and that's really it around that, that transaction. Um, there's also some capability, some functionality in here that allows you to report and aggregate, so not just individual transactions or envelopes are being generated, but you can look at all the forms within a department or a template or an area. Um, and so you can get a sense of, 
again, what, are, these forms, are these forms being completed? How long is it taking to complete those? And if they're bottlenecks in the process, what are those? And how can you do? What can you do to, to fix that? Um, but that's really that's everything I plan on showing for the demo. I hope that gives you a sense of how DocuSign works. On those two examples, the fact that we can embed or coexist with other applications, um, we accelerate and make your transa transactions faster within these applications. And it's it really meant to be a, a simple, easy, intuitive capability for folks to use to sign and complete documents. Thank you, Brian, and thank you, Jim, as well. That will complete our webinar. If you guys do have any questions, uh, you can feel free to throw them in the chat. We'll hold on for just a couple minutes. And then if not, um, you can find all of our contact information through our website as well. All right, looks like no questions are coming through. If you need to reach us, please feel free to give SIPA a call. We can go ahead and get you in contact with DocuSign as well. Our number is 720-409-5634. Or you can send an inquiry to one of our email addresses at SIPA at COSIPA.gov. We'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone.